Maurice Claret was back in the OSU lineup after missing last week's UC game with a knee injury. The freshman picked up right where he left off a couple of weeks ago against Washington State. With the first quarter winding down, Mighty Mo muscles in from the two to give the Buckeyes a seven zip lead. 100,000 plus at the horseshoe, loving it. But Claret wasn't done. In the second quarter, he waltzes in virtually untouched from one yard out, giving the Buckeyes a 14 to three lead. Just before halftime, the freshman scores his third and final touchdown of the day. This time, it's not quite as easy as he puts it into full extension mode, barely breaking the stripe. Claret ran for 104 yards the third time this year. He's topped 100. On to the second half. This is Chris Gamble on the reverse. He is gone. Adios. Arriva Derci untouched for a 45-yard score. The Buckeyes up 28-10. Quarterback Craig Krenzel got it done, too. Check out the four-yard fade to Michael Jenkins, giving the Buckeyes a 25-point lead at 35-10. Later, it was his backup, Scott McMullen, hooking up with Jenkins for 15 yards and six points as OSU improves to 5-0 with a 45-17 win over Indiana. I think all of us in the stadium were excited that Maurice was back uh, in uniform, back playing, and, and uh, you know, we're better when all the guys are here. I, know I had fell on my knee uh, on the last touchdown going into the, going into halftime, and like I saw, I felt it like split, split and wide open. I'm about to try to cover my knee up coming to the sideline, but I guess the coach knew I kind of fell on the soul. 107-year-old Franklin Field in Philadelphia. The Cats opponent, Temple, a team that like the Cincinnati Bengals, hasn't had a winning season in 11 years. Judging by this footage, the Owl mascot is tough, but Temple's football team historically hasn't been. On the fifth play of today's game, Temple coughed up the football, and Antoine Peake recovered for the Bearcats, racing 39 yards before being hauled down at the 14-yard line. I was looking for some blockers. So I got ahead of everybody, and I, I seen two of the, the players in front of me, and I said, Okay, where's the other guys to come, you know, give me a couple blocks? Almost spent out of it, but didn't quite. But we got the ball back and we scored off of it, so that's the most important. It took one play for the Bearcats to score, a 14-yard run by DeMarco McCleskey that gave the Cats a 7-0 lead less than three minutes into the game. Coach Burns called a great play of the offensive line, blocked very well, and I just cut back and ran into the zone. That was the only score of the first quarter, but the Cats made it 14-0 early in the second on a four-yard touchdown pass from Gino Gadouli to Ladaris Van. That was a great opportunity for me to help my team. You know, they gave me the opportunity to help my team get the victory, in it, and, you know, I came through for them. But Gadouli had a tough time throwing into a stiff breeze in the second and third quarters. The only time he tried to throw long, his pass fluttered like a wounded duck. I knew when I got up off the ground, the ball was still in the air, that uh, we shouldn't be throwing deep anymore that way. With the wind at his back, Mike McGann could throw downfield and hit Zamir Cobb for a 22-yard TD to put Temple on the board. After a field goal made it 14-9, Cincinnati scored again with 22 seconds left in the half. A two-yard run by McCleskey that made it 21-9 Bearcats. I think that uh, we need to start getting out here and, and, and getting our mind focused on winning the game and let's go home and not have to, you know, worry about playing hard at the end and, you know, having a hard game to finish. Temple took the lead with two big plays in the third quarter, blocking a punt by freshman Chet Irvin that led to one touchdown, then completing a 27-yard pass on third and 21 that set up another. But a 22-21 deficit going to the fourth quarter is no big deal to the master of the comeback. Players make plays in the fourth quarter, and I, th I think LV and Ty and Johnny O all made big plays in the fourth quarter. And when we get into the fourth quarter, I don't know what it is, but so something just happens to the team where we get in gear and everybody starts clicking on the same page. For the fifth time in 15 college games, Gino led the Cats to a come-from-behind victory in the fourth quarter. His 32-yard touchdown pass to John Olinger gave UC the lead, and his 27-yard touchdown pass to Ladaris Van put it out of reach. UC improves to 2-2 two two with a 35-22 win at Temple. We show a lot of heart and character out here today by our kids. And uh, fourth quarter rallies, what it took again. A big win. You know, we got to get back on the winning streak. And uh, I think it started here today. And we, get, we got another big game ahead of us in Miami. Hey, like we say, we're, we're the comeback kids. And we have a good chance, a good time trying to come back and try to get a win. And we came out with a good one. That's a really big win. Just bring us, you know, give us a little confidence. Not that we, we were lacking confidence, but, you know, just give us a little bit and get ready for Miami coming in.
Geno's 312-yard passing performance gives him six 300-yard games at UC. Four games into his sophomore year, he's already tied the all-time school record held by Greg Cook. Up next, it's the annual battle for the victory bell as the Cats host their arch-rival, the Miami Redhawks, next Saturday. That's a 1 o'clock kickoff.